save all. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Come on in, people of God. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Say tonight, don't, don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Cause he's able, he's able, he's able. Hallelujah, God is able. Listen, people of God, come on in. I promise you don't want to miss this. God is able to do just what he said he would do. And there is a word from the Lord. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Come on in the room. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. That's all I got right now. Don't give up on God. And I know you saying you ain't gave up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. But when you get discouraged, you're giving up on God. Don't give up on God. Come on. Cause he won't give up on you. When you get depressed, you're giving up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. When you get anxious, you're giving up on God. Come on. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Because he's able. He's able. He's able. Hallelujah. God is able. Hallelujah. Bless your name. I love the Lord. He is a good God. I love the Lord. He's a good God. When I tell y'all the word the Lord just gave me this morning, I am shook. I'm just like, my God, come on. The Lord is speaking. So let's just jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. Lord, we just bless you. We thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you for your word, Lord. We ask that you give us ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Lord, we love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and amen. Listen, come on in. When I tell y'all, God is so good. So I'm so excited. So we are live on Facebook. We're also live on makeoverministry.com. Uh, we're also live there and we are live on TikTok right now. So for whatever reason, if we get cut off or any of the other social media, please, I'm trying to actually get us to go to makeoverministry.com. I'm tired of being cut off. I'm tired of being uh, censored and banned for telling the truth because I'm going to tell the truth. It is my life source. I got to tell the truth. My God, come on. And so we're trying to tr transfer over. We're trying to come into our own platform um, so that we can give the unadulterated word of God. So our, our website is makeoverministry.com. And if you're watching on your phone, you'll go to the top uh, right corner with the three little dots. You'll click it and you'll go to, I think it says broadcast or li uh, library or something like that. Um, uh, video library, I believe. And you'll see me laugh. So. All right, let's hop into the word. I love God and all his children. So I'm sitting there in uh, yesterday and I wrote a message on Facebook. And as I wrote this message, it was just what the Lord was giving me. And I was just breaking it down. Good morning, Nancy Joe. And so I'm just breaking it down, listening, understanding, writing, taking it in, all of that. So I'm taking the word in and then I put a post on Facebook, what the Lord had just taught me. And so what the Holy Ghost had just taught me. So I'm like, okay, so I give the word. Later on that evening, someone commented on the post and they put your right now I clicked all the other ones somebody said preach apostle somebody said you tell them the truth blah 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 so I clicked all the other ones but when it came to your right for something in me just would not let me click the your right so I go to bed wake up this morning I jump in my word and um 
the Lord reminded me of that post. I'm like, God, what is it? What is it? What is this about? Then I can't, you know, I don't know why I go back. I look at it again and I was like, no, I just can't click. You're right. I can't click like. I can't click heart. I don't know why, um, but I can't click that. So um, I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay. And so the Lord just begins to 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 minister. And he begins to let me understand why. So I go on the post and I begin to comment. Um, and um, the first thing that was made clear that I needed to make clear that was made clear to me was that I'm not the truth, but I'm telling the truth. And I think many people are taking God's credit. The Lord told me early back in my first beginning before I became a pastor, or if it, if I had already became a pastor, it might have been within the first month. But the Lord told me, do not take my credit. He said, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to take care of you. You're going to have what you need, but do not take my credit. And so as I'm sitting there and I'm writing and I'm looking, I'm writing back, I'm commenting back. And the first thing that I had to make clear was that there's a difference between telling the truth and being the truth. The messengers of God are not the truth. We're telling the truth. Okay. We're telling the truth. Um, and so the Lord has helped me to understand he is going, he is going back judging some people, some leaders by some of the very first things that he told you before your ministry got big, before you got a platform. God, I love your word on today. My God, come on. He is judging the people according to what he told them in their prayer closet, what he told them before they got a following, what he told them before the world knew their name. Come on. The Lord is judging them. Did you stay true? Come on in the room to the covenant. Did you stay true to the marriage vows made at the altar of the Lord? That is why many marriages are falling apart. And that is why many ministries are falling apart because folks are not staying true to the covenant made at the altar of the Lord. God, I bless your name. They want the benefits, but they're not staying true to the covenant. God, I love your word on today. And so we must be, let me take my time. I don't want to rush because I got to give it to you how the Lord gave it to me. Okay. We have to be mindful what we come in agreement with. I remember um, I was sharing my testimony years ago with a woman in, in um, Florida. And she was like, Oh my God, that's so good of you. That's so awesome of you. That's so good. And I was like, no, it's not good of me. I was like, God is good. I thank God for no, but I mean, yeah, it was you though. And I get it. I get what she was saying was you had to know what she didn't know what she was saying, but what she was trying to say was, um, you didn't have to answer the call. But you answer the call because everyone doesn't answer the call. That's what she was trying to say. But instead of saying, uh, we have to learn how to get in a posture to thank God for the people more than thanking the people. I thank God for you. That's the correct posture because I can't reveal anything unless the Lord reveals it. So I'm not the truth, but I'm telling what the truth told me. Okay. I'm telling what the Holy Ghost gave to me. The word of God says the Holy Ghost will lead you into all truth. And so people are just messengers, but we are not the message. We're supposed to imitate God. So we're supposed to have godly character. That's supposed to be, we're supposed to be holy. That's the word of God also. But we are not the message. We're just the messenger. And so I remember going back and forth with her and I'm like, ma'am, no, I cannot. I, no, it's not me. It's not that I'm so great. It's that the great God that lives in me is greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. And so um, people's intentions are good. But as leaders and as people of God, you have to be mindful how you come into agreement because they're not going to be held accountable because they don't know 
any better. But we have to be held accountable into what God has told us, what he has given us, the instruction and command, God, I love your word on today, that comes directly from the Lord. You do not get the blessings of the Lord without the instruction of the Lord. You do not receive the blessing of the prophecy, God, I love your word, without following the instruction of the prophecy. The word of God says, if you obey my commands, the things that I'm telling you, if you obey my commands, decrees, and my laws that I'm giving you, my God, come on, then you will be fruitful. You will prosper. It doesn't matter what other people do. I'm coming to put some people in alignment so that as you go forward, you don't take God's credit. Come on, because we will be judged for this. You do not, it's not my message it's his message. I'm just a messenger. It flows through me. I'm just a glory carrier. I am not the glory. Hmm. Come on. And so we got to understand that I'm not right. So the, the comment on there, they said, you're right. They they agree that their, their intentions were pure. Their intentions were pure. They commented and just was saying, you know, you're right with the statement, but it was honestly, it was God allowing that comment to check my heart posture. Are you going to take my credit? So they said you're right, but are you going to take my credit? No, I'm not right. The word of God is right. The Holy Ghost is right. Come on. The great teacher, the Holy Ghost, the one who taught me, the great Holy Ghost is right. And so we have to be mindful what we come into agreement with. It's okay for somebody to say amen because they amen into the word. It's okay for someone to say, uh, you telling the truth, preach, preacher. Amen. You talking right. Amen. All those things are right. But when when you start taking the credit and somebody might not have known this. So this is just the Lord helping us to make clear and understanding. I'm reminded of the pastor, uh, Gino Jenkins. When he preaches, he loves to say, am I right? He loves to say, am I right? And the people say, you right. Um, and so he's taking God's credit. And so as the Lord began to break that thing down to me and I'm, I'm just listening, I'm just typing, listen, when I tell you it was the, wow. It was, I said, God, you are, wow, my God, help us, Holy Ghost. And so what the Lord began to help me understand is copyright infringement. Okay. Copyright infringement is a holy principle. Copyright infringement is a holy principle, but it's been used by the world. It's been used by Hollywood to prostitute the gospel. Okay. Help us, Holy Ghost. <laughs> My God. And someone said, you don't have to correct people. God gets the glory regardless. It sounds good, but I have to give an account if I don't correct people. That's the job of leadership is to bring into correct alignment the body of Christ into right knowing and understanding. So yes, God is going to get the glory regardless, but that right there would get me in trouble. If I say, oh, well, that's fine. You know, I am right. Cause then I start, then pride comes in. It's an offering of pride. I can't take credit for it. Cause I didn't give it to, listen, I'm smart, but I ain't that smart. The things that God gives me, the I'm good, but I ain't that good. Come on. I'm just, I'm sitting, when I sit back and I'm amazed, I know it's the Holy Ghost teaching me because I'm just like, woo, that's it. Speak the truth with love. Absolutely. But even, you know, I think that's a good one. Let's talk about that for a second. Even when it comes to uh, the to love, love is correction. The Bible says, if you don't love me, if you don't correct me, you don't love me. If you don't correct me, you don't love me. So it is a part of love. Absolutely. The truth and love are not separate. The truth and love, they go together. Copyright infringements is a thing that, that, that Hollywood has used, but it's a heavenly principle. The credit of the word, the word of God, the, the, the things that the Lord drops in our spirit, the dreams, the vision, everything that the Lord gives us, um, the credit of the word belongs to the owner of the word. Come on. So, so when Jeno Jenkins is hollering, am I right? You're now, Ooh, that's dangerous. God, I love your word. It's dangerous. Come on. It's not that we're right. The word of God is right. The word of God 
the credit, it belongs to the owner of the word. The owner of the word of God is God. And anyone who takes his credit will be dealt with. Y'all think copyright infringements in the world is bad. Hmm. We think copyright, that's it. We think copyright infringements in the world is bad. You Oh, if you copy, I can't do copyright because they're going to find me, child. Woo, glory. Listen, I promise you. I promise you, this is very important as we go forward in the Lord, as those that are speaking, those that are messengers, those that are messengers of the gospel. Come on. Listen, the Lord helped me understand. He said, you can enjoy the word. You can preach the word, teach the word. You can be healed by the word, be delivered by the word, but don't take credit for the word. If anyone has picked up my book off Amazon, the book says, the book says, um, I think it says when it says the author part, because I know the Lord woke me up every morning and gave me the 90 day dolls devotional. I didn't put that book together. The Lord woke me up and gave it to me. So it says, I want to say, I believe it says inspired by the Holy Ghost written by Julia Smith. Okay. And so we cannot take credit. I promise you, this is something I just bless God for letting me know it. Whether you, I hope you get it. I hope you get it. If you are called to any, if you just a messenger of the gospel, which we all are messengers of the gospel, because we all should be talking and sharing the good news. So be mindful. The Lord told me there are getting ready to be uh, heightened offerings in this season. Offers. And it's up to you whether you accept it or not. And so as I'm sitting there and I see that comment that says, you're right, I literally, the Lord reminded me of that word. Because some of us are going to say, I don't have none to, well, that word ain't for me. That word ain't for me. Um, I, I'll get to Geno in a second. The name of my book is Dow's 90 Day Devotional. Um, so listen, as I'm sitting there, the Lord reminded me of these offerings. He, and some people are saying, well, I don't got nothing. So I know, you know, that word don't apply to me. Uh, they're they're going to be offerings. That was an offering, whether I accepted it or not. That's right. It keeps us humble. You're right. Absolutely. That's good. Um, whether I accepted her comment of your right. Of, it was an offer. Do you uh, do you accept that you're right? Do you accept that you're right? Do you accept that this is your, do you accept this offering of pride? Come on. And so I want us to see this so that we can understand clearly what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. So it, it was perfect because it became a moment of teaching. It was a perfect moment to not only if I kept it to myself, I got the message. I received that. Thank you, Lord. I received it and I understood what the Lord was teaching me. But now it's a moment to teach those, all of us together to understand that we don't take God's credit. And that's an offering. That's an offering. So be mindful how people, how you allow people to speak of you because their words are offerings. Okay. So someone said, um, is General Jenkins a good preacher or so on? So, well, what I'll say is that some of Geno Jenkins' teachings are not biblical. He pulls it from the Bible, but he teaches very much on the law. And some of his teachings are absolutely wrong. And I know that they're absolutely wrong because they go in direct um, opposite of the things that the Lord has taught me, walked me through in my life um, as a woman of God. One, he doesn't believe in women preachers. I didn't call myself. I would have been good combing her. I, this is not, a, I don't even like being in front of the camera. I was good just combing her, but I wanted to comb the women of God's hair, not be the woman of God. So that's one. Then another one, he has a teaching that he teaches on marriage and that's a whole, that's, that's not biblically accurate. Also, he's not rightly dividing the word, but the thing about the Lord showed us with these offerings is that when you um, you're going, it's something that's not going to be settled. That's how you're going to know. Even Juanita Bynum, I love Juanita Bynum. I promise you I do. But I was listening to a sermon that she gave a little while ago. And she was saying that the Lord said, we're getting ready to have our, our dead loved ones come back and give us messages. And I'm like, now everything else she said was accurate, true and right. But wait a minute, our dead loved ones is about to come back and give us messages. Isn't that being a medium? My God, I love Juanita Bynum. Don't get it. I, I think she has preached. She has blessed me with some messages that have walked me through some seasons of life. But that right there, wait a minute, what? 
Yeah. And so we have to, we have to be mindful of the little things. The Bible said it is the, um, it is the, the foxes, the small foxes that ruin the vine. We got to be mindful. It's the little things that we let slide. You can't let the little things like there's going to be a witness bear in your spirit, man. But it's up to you whether you sweep it under the rug. It's up to you whether you take it in, whether you listen to it, whether you say, oh, well, she just said that one thing wrong. So I'm going to keep listening to it. She didn't mean that part. Well, if you don't mean it, you go back and correct it. OK, you go back and you correct it. This is very important that we get this. So even let me say this. So I was sharing a testimony about a pastor that I had grew up under. And I was saying how um, I was in high school and my stepfather was a was was a was one of the associate pastors at their church. But he also was a part time crack addict. And it was just a hot mess. And so one particular the Lord brought the whole thing back to my memory last night because I couldn't remember why. I just remember the situation. And so the Holy Ghost brought it all the way back to my remembrance last night so that I could could make sure that this is a squeaky clear moment. Okay. And so um, the pastor came to my house at like late at night, midnight, one o'clock. I don't know, something like that. The pastor of the church, the lead senior pastor of the church came to my house and he had two women with him that were prostitutes. How do I know they were prostitutes? In my heart, I knew it. I don't know. I was a young girl, but something in me, I just knew it. And um, right. No, that's not biblical. And so um, I... I don't know. They had on trench coats and they had lingerie under it. Or if they didn't have lingerie, they had many dresses so little that you could like they was not dressed appropriately under there. And so I'm sitting there and I always have remembered that that um moment. I always remembered it, but I couldn't remember why. Well, now I remember why last night as I'm laying there. The reason was my stepfather, like I said, who was one of the associate pastors of that church, he um he had went out on a crack binge. He had went out. And so the pastor of the church, my mama called him and said, can you come over here and pray with us? So when he showed up at our house, I guess he was already out doing what he was doing. He said these women were his prayer partners. Okay. So I shared this testimony. I want to say yesterday or the day before. I don't know. And one of the people that went to church with me, she was offended that I said his name. But the truth of the matter is this. If he had repented and he had truly, he had really given his life to God and he had really turned from his wicked ways, he wouldn't be offended by me telling the truth. It happened in my house. I remember it. And, it, and he would tell his own testimony and he would say, absolutely, she is right. And I was in a reprobated mind and I thank God for the Lord changing me and delivering me. And that is not my testimony today, but he would not be offended. See, we're only offended by the truth when we're still living a lie. Okay. So I wanted to make that squeaky crystal clear. All right. Um, and so we have to understand that copyright infringements are a heavenly principle um, but the world has used it. So I had to go up, go back and look at the definition. I had to go back and look at the definition of copyright infringement because I wanted to make sure that I understood what the Lord was saying to me. So I looked up the definition and the definition says in general, copyright infringement occurs when a copywritten work is reproduced, distributed, performed, publicly displayed or made into a derived derivative work without the copyright owner's permission. Okay. So that is the definition that I got from, uh, from Google. This is what the Holy Ghost gave me and said, now let me show you what that looks like in the spirit. All right. So let's go back in general. Copyright infringement occurs when a copy written work Let's stop right there. Grab your word. Let's go to Ephesians 2. Woo, God, I love your word on today. You are good to me. My God, thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 2 and um, verse 10. First, I want to read it out of the King James Version. Okay. Woo. Let those that have ears to hear, hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. All right. The King James Version says, for we are his workmanship. Wait a minute. When copyright occurs, when a copywritten work, when a copywritten work, we are a copywritten work, the people of God. We are his workmanship. Okay. Created in Christ 
unto good works, which God hath, get, hath before ordained that we should walk in them. All right. We are his workmanship. We are a copy written work. Let's go to uh, the, the NLT translation. Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. God, I love your word on today. My God, come on. I need us to understand what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. So we are we are his workmanship. So the copyright infringement definition is when copy copywritten copyright infringement occurs when a copyrighted work is reproduced. Okay. Distributed, performed, publicly displayed or made into a derivative work without the copyright owner's permission. So when people have taken their God gift and sold it to another kingdom, it is copyright infringement. And I just bless God. I thank God. He is so good. He is so gracious. This is what these Hollywood gospel people have done. Yes, they sang and the glory shows up and it's good, blah, 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 and all of those things. But they have taken their God gift and they have given it to the devil's kingdom. My God, come on. They have sold their copyright. Come on, the right to the word of God, the works of God, the songs that God gives them, the words that God gives them, the books that God gives them, the, the everything, the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, and they have given it over to another kingdom. The gift belongs to God. The gift to sing belongs to God. Beyonce never had the right to give it to the devil's kingdom. And, but we think just because she's singing secular music that it's different between Tamala Mann singing gospel music. Same kingdom though. And that's the trickery. That's the trickery involved. And, and though we don't want to see it because we love these people. I know it's, it is what it is. More and more things are going to be revealed. So you don't got to take my word for it. Time reveals every word. The word of the Lord says, I watch over my word to perform it. I know we don't want to thank this about these people, but it is what it is. Any preacher that is not preaching sin. Now there definitely has to be a balance, but these Hollywood gospel pre preachers, they never, they're, they're motivational speakers and they have sold out. They don't preach the truth. People can come in and out of their sanctuary every Sunday with an encouraging message. And I have been encouraged by some of the best of them. Amen. But I still would have went to hell. I could have sat in any of their sanctuaries and I still would have went to hell because the truth of God is not being preached. Galatians 5 and 19 is not being preached. Don't you realize those that do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Those that live sexually immoral lives, my God, come on. If homosexuality, adultery, fornication, lying, cheating, backbiting, gossiping, they, they'll deal with the other stuff. They'll deal with gossip. They'll deal with anger. They'll deal with the family structure, but they will not deal with sexual immorality. T.D. Jakes, don't preach about it. Joe Osteen made a whole video. He said he just doesn't, you know, I just love people and that's good, but you can't love people to hell. Come on. You got to tell the truth and the copyright infringements are happening because they taken that they, they started out and they know they walked with God on that thing. They knew that they heard the Lord. It's, they started out with God. But when the offer came, when the offer came to sell their birthright, come on, I'm talking to us. We got to get this because this is very serious. This is very, you do not get to take, you, listen, the Lord said, I, that's the only, you don't come in covenant with Hollywood about a God gift. <laughs> All of them. 
Now, I get it. I get it. I get it. The Bible says, Paul talks about, he said, listen, at the end of the day, even though they preach for money, the gospel is still going forth. And that's true. But as you mature in God, it comes to a place where I no longer am comfortable listening to people preaching about Jesus, but not really giving me the whole truth. It's like imitation cheese. I don't like it. I don't like imitation cheese. If it ain't real cheese, I don't want it. I do not like imitation cheese. Come on. And the, and so it is when it comes to the word of the Lord. Many have taken their copywritten self. They have been bought. The Bible says we have been bought with a high price. You, you don't get to take your gift to the kingdom where the same people that are singing songs and making movies against your God. I promise if you if you just if you look, may the Lord give you eyes to see. If you look, you're gonna make it's gonna make sense. You're gonna say, Man, I've been overlooking it. Cause I like them. I promise you, I did not want to believe it. But but and the Lord, I listened to the sermon, the whole sermon. The whole sermon that I need to buy and preach. I listened to the whole sermon and was in agreement with all of it until I heard her say our dead loved ones are going to, the glory is going to fall so deep that our dead loved ones are going to come back and give us keys to the next singdom, seasons. What? Come on. But what happens in us is we don't want, well, but everything else was good. But that's how the devil works. That's how the devil works. <laughs> It's not going to be all bad. It's going to be enough to persuade you slowly. <laughs> Help us, Holy Ghost. Come on. Every, all these messages are coming out about T.D. Jakes. And because everybody just loves T.D. Jakes. Oh, we don't want to believe that. We don't want to believe that. We don't want to believe that about T.D. Jakes. We don't, you know, we don't want to believe that. Okay. But the thing about it, you don't have to believe it. The word of God comes to pass because he is God. But it is our job as the messengers of Christ to share the word and not take the credit. Do not come in covenant. God, I love your word on today. Come on. Do not come in covenant with those that are not doing righteous work, that are not faith filled, that are not believers, that are not fire baptized. Come on. We have those that preach that, oh, honey, I listen, I love you, but I, I, I'll still slap you. I love you, but honey, I'm just, no, no. When are you washed? I promise you're going to begin to see your favorite Hollywood preachers. You're going to start losing the, the, the music, all that stuff. You're going to start having a, man, I just, I can't get past what I've learned. I can't get past what I know. Come on, I love Maverick City. I, their music has been very blessed to me. But once more and more things started being revealed, don't sound the same to my ears anymore. Are the words true? The words are true that they're saying. But the spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, oh God. Do I have the owner's position? The Bible said, what fellowship do good and evil have together? What fellowship do Christ and the devil have together? Yeah. What fellowship? I don't want it. Come on. I love God and all of his children. Yeah. And that's true. That's good. Someone said they are just stones that God may speak. And that's so true. So true. But as we begin to purify and we begin to continue to go forward, the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So absolutely. But when people are stat when people are in leading, they're leading people. You can't lead me in worship that you don't live. The Bible says uh, worship is to be done in spirit and in truth. You cannot just, in, oh, I just want to get in this. I don't know what spirit you're now operating in if you're not living the truth. 
Copyright infringements are a heavenly principle. You do not get to take, I'm about to give you Bible. You do not get to take your God gift and do what you want and use it how you want and do whatever you want. And I, I promise you're getting ready to begin to see it's going. Why can I turn off the turn off the sound and I can look at the gospel music being played? And if I don't hear no sound, I'm conf I don't know if it's a nightclub. Or a church service because the clothes are so tight, the men are gay, the dresses are tight, the stage is dark, it's got smoke music playing. Come on, it's got, I mean, it's got smoke machines, we got all of these theatrical productions, and people have settled. The people have settled for a presentation of God. Hmm. Amen. Come on, you're telling the truth. That's good. Come on. People have settled for a presentation of God. They don't know the presence. They don't know the presence of God. So they need smoke and mirrors. They need uh, Michael Todd. He was he he started out good, but now he's a presentation gospel preacher. Now it's all about a theatrical production. We got to get back to the blueprint. Thank you, God. Hmm. I don't know about nobody else, but the Lord told me, build my church. Not by, by obligation, not by tradition, but build it by revelation. And a lot of this stuff people don't put in place is not what God has revealed to me. And he showed me that's not, I didn't put that in place. I didn't ask people to do that. We're following tradition. That's right. And it's not the will of God. First Corinthians. Let's go there. Six. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Nope. Let me let me stay in the right order. Let's go to Ezekiel 16. Let me give you Bible because I'm not just talking crazy. Let me give you Bible. That's right. That's true. They are perverting the word of God. Bless your name. Ezekiel 16. Hmm. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Let's start at verse, we'll start at verse one. Ezekiel 16 and one. Then another message came to me from the Lord, son of man, confront Jerusalem with her detestable sin. And this is what's going on right now. The Lord told me I'm sharpening the tongue of my prophet. Because that is where the word of God comes from. The word of God is a two-edged sword. So the word is, no, he's not talking. Ja'Kalen Carr, and I, and I believe she was, the Lord signed her up to be used for the glory. But every message she has is sweet. She was never called to be a sweet sign to the world. Not the anointing on her life. No. She was never called to be a lollipop. She was called to be a sword. To cut away, standing before great masses of people and not speaking about sin. People are going to have to give an account. They're going to have to give an account. I'm talking to somebody because the offers are real. You do not take your God gift and use it and sign it and partner up with those that are in the kingdom of darkness. Confront her detestable sin. This is what the word of God is supposed to do. It's not supposed to leave people comfortable. Well, you And listen, I love deliverance ministry. Deliverance ministry is not always throw up in a bucket. Sometimes you got to help people go back and unravel. That's the gift that God has given me. Help them unravel and understand why they got in that door. Many people want to cut the fruit off the tree. Don't cut the fruit off the tree. Take that thing all the way back down. Let's get to the root and the seed so that the next time this thing happens, I won't grow the same tree with different fruits. 
So absolutely, let's definitely have compassion. Let's help people untangle, but it's not, it's never meant to keep people comfortable. Confront her detestable sin. Give her this message from the sovereign Lord. You are nothing but a Canaanite. Your father was an Amorite. Your mother was a Hittite. On the day you were born, no one cared about you. Your umbilical cord was not cut. The Lord said, this is why many people struggle when they hear the true word of God. Because their umbilical cord from the world has not been cut. They're preaching, praying, and prophesying. They're singing, but their umbilical cord, what is the umbilical cord? It is your life source. It is your stream. God, I love your word on today. It is your source. You cannot live. A baby cannot live and if the umbilical cord from the mother is severed within the womb. It's your life source. If your life source has not been cut from the world, you're going to struggle. With hearing the true and unadulterated word of God, it's going to sound like, that's judging me. The word of God says we are supposed to judge. Those that are in the church, those that are in the body of Christ, judge righteously. Put it up against the scripture, the word of God. Try the spirit by the spirit to see if it is of God. Your umbilical cord was not cut. You were never washed. Come on. So many people are preaching, praying, and prophesying, but they have not been washed from the world. That's why they think it's okay to get up and sing and preach and pray in a body con dress so tight. And that's why they think it's okay to get up and preach and pray uh, with a fashion nova skin tight pencil skirt on. That's why they think it's okay to preach, pray, and prophesy with these, these men in these clothes and you look like a homosexual. You've never been washed. <laughs> You've never been rubbed with salt. That's what the word of God says. The word of God says rub with salt. What does that mean? Preserved. Preserved. Come on. Kept intact. After your umbilical cord has been cut, then you got to be washed. Then you got to be preserved by the glory of God. Come on. And wrapped in cloth covered. Covering of the Lord. Bless your name, oh God. No one had the slightest interest in you. No one pitied you or cared for you. On the day that you were born, you were unwanted and dumped in a field to die. But I came. I'm talking to somebody on today. Listen, Zion. I don't know who exactly this word is for. I know it's blessing me. But I promise you, as God is elevating you, please do not elevate without this word. Do not elevate without this understanding. You do not come in covenant with the devil to produce a holy thing. But I came by and I saw you there helpless, kicking about in your own blood. As you lay there, I said, live. If we listen to Fantasia's story, if we listen to Leandria Johnson's story, come on, both of them say that they had a hard time. They was homeless, in rough situations and they asked the Lord to help them and they both got to a platform and sold out. Yeah, Fantasia sang a little gospel here and there, but her dresses are still so skin tight. Come on, she don't feel she feels comfortable singing a gospel song in a cat suit or a bodysuit on stage where she just got done singing whatever else song she was singing. Now I don't know. Let me let me say, let me make sure that this is in correct posture. I don't know what she's singing today. And prayerfully, maybe that ain't her testimony today. But when the last time I seen her, let me say it that way. You ask God to help you. Lord, help me. I'm homeless. I'm broken. I'm beat. I'm battered. I'm scorned. And he said, okay, I see you there kicking in your own blood. I see you there. And your life is a hot mess. It's broken. It's in shambles. I want to bless you. I want you to be a business owner. I want you to be a husband. I want you to be a wife. I want you to lead ministries. I want you, my God, come on. I want you to do what it is that is meant for you to do that I have purpose and intended you to do from the very foundations of the earth. I want you to have all those things. I want you to live, says the spirit of the Lord. And I helped you. 
I helped you to thrive like a plant in the field. You grew up. You became a beautiful jewel. Come on. Come on. Your story didn't end right there. You started off a jacked up hot mess, but when God blessed you, come on, look at the, look, are y'all seeing it right now? You're seeing it, you're like, dang, yeah. You listen to Tyler Perry and his story and his testimony and how he was in a car. And then I heard him say, yeah. I heard him say, yeah, at my studio, the way we give homage to the Lord is we took Bibles and buried them under the front door. So you got to walk across the word. The problem is why would you bury the Bible? Why would you bury the Bible? We can't do nothing with a buried Bible. <laughs> and, and, and just when he buried the Bible, he buried the help. He buried the great helper. God, I love your word on today. So what you don't realize when you're crossing over, I know it seems harmless, y'all. Come on. It seems harmless because we, we have been indoctrinated to really love these people and love their story and love their testimony. But when he dresses up as Medea, it's still mimicking and mocking and it's still an image of homosexuality. Why couldn't he just get a grandma to play the part if that's what he was trying to do? Why did he have to put on the dress? But your breast became full and your body hair grew, but you were still naked. And then I passed by again. Once you got up a little bit, Come on. Once you got up a little bit and you was doing, come on, you still, you was, you wasn't, you wasn't homeless no more. You wasn't beat, battered, and scorned. Come on. Another offering came. There was another time to go to the next level. Come on. You better make sure you're leveling up in God. <laughs> and when I passed by again, I saw that you were old enough for love. So I wrapped my cloak around you to cover your nakedness and declared my marriage vows. I made a covenant with you, says the sovereign Lord, and you became mine. Bless your name, O oh God. We forget who we belong to. In marriage, we forget. That's why people cheat and have an adulteress and they mistreat you, you, you because they forget who they belong to. Even when it comes to the context of marriage, your marriage is not your own. You don't get, that's why the Bible says the bedroom is undefiled. That's not a free for all to do whatever you want to do. No, don't defile this holy bed because there are some things that can defile the holy bed. Yeah. That's good. That's so true. They lost their first love. My God. Then I bathed you and washed off your blood and rubbed fragrant oils into your skin. I gave you expensive clothing of fine linen and silk, beautifully embroidered sandals made of goat skin leather. I gave you beautiful jewelry, bracelets, beautiful necklace, a ring for your nose, earrings for your ears, a lovely crown for your head. It's not that the Lord does not want you to have nice things. He don't want nice things to have you. And at what expense do I have these nice things? My God. You were adorned with gold and silver. Your clothes were made of fine linen and costly fabrics. And you were beautifully embroidered. You ate the finest food, choice flour, honey, olive oil. And you became more beautiful than ever. You looked like a queen. And so you were. The Lord said, I've taken you from the broke down, beat, battered, and scorned place, placed you in a good place, in a good position in life. And this is where people begin to take the credit, y'all. Your fame soon spread throughout the world because of your beauty. Where did your beauty come from? See, it's not that God doesn't want you to be beautiful. It's not that God doesn't want you to even be adorned. But you have to figure out, you got to always know where your beauty comes from and know that even my beauty is not my own. So I can't use it in the other kingdom. Abigail was beautiful, but her beauty was only to position her, my God, come on, for purpose. Her beauty was not for her to get drunk on. Selfies. 
Let me take a selfie. That was a song that was out when I used to listen to worldly music. And everything is about self. And the Bible says in the last days, people will become lovers of themselves. You think your gift is your own. You think your mouth is your own. That's why you say whatever you want. You think your eyes are your own. That's why you watch whatever you want. You think your ears are your own. That's why you listen to whatever you want. You think your body is your own. <laughs> That's why you do whatever you want with it and take it wherever you want to go. I dressed you in my splendor and perfected your beauty, says the sovereign Lord. And this, once you get to this stage, this is where the world sees you. The world see the world seen Jacqueline Carr after the Lord had cleaned her, washed her, changed her, delivered her, put her in a house. They seen the glory of God on her life. This is where that Tamala man, this is where all of them, this is where they seen uh, Leandra Johnson. Come on. Uh, what's the other girl's name? I can't think of her name right now. She sings, give me you. Um, Quandria, Quandria Banks, I believe is her name. People's, the glory shows bright. You can't, when you, when you hold the light, it can't be hidden. They want that light because the kingdom is dark. I want the light on your life, but I don't want to do what I have to do to get the light. God, I bless your name. I dressed you in my splendor and perfected your beauty, says the sovereign Lord. Verse 15, we're in Ezekiel 16 and 15. But you thought your fame and your beauty were your own. So you gave yourself as a prostitute. You gave yourself as a prostitute to every man who came along. Your beauty was theirs for the asking. The glory of God on your life, you gave it to them because they asked for it. Come on, let me talk to my single women out there that, oh, you know, listen, you get, he said he gonna marry me one day, so I just let him have a little bit. Come on, you, you your beauty is not your own. Your body is not your own. You do not get to give, come on, the word of God that has been given to you in trust it with you. Come on. It is not your own. You don't get to prostitute the gospel and the single men. Absolutely. You do not get to prostitute the gospel. You use the lovely things I gave you to make shrines for idols where you play the prostitute. Unbelievable. How could such things ever happen? You took the very jewelry and gold and silver ornaments I had given you, come on, and made statues of men and worshiped them. This is adultery against me. I told y'all. This is, let's go back for a second for the person that asked about Geno Jenkins. Geno Jenkins preaches that if uh, you've been married more than once that you're in adultery. That's what he preaches. But the Bible says that if you've been married and if the if you're in adultery, unless the case of you're in you're in sin in case in, in the case, let me see, let me get it together. You're in sin um, unless there has been adultery committed in the marriage. Okay. Now some would say adultery is only sexual, but ain't nobody never had sex with God. Committing Adultery is not only sexual, but it's when you come into agreement, come on, when you come out of agreement of the covenant and go into another kingdom. When you stand at the altar to get married, you're standing there. And when you come to Christ, you're coming there and you're standing there to say that at the very, that's good, that's so true. At that time, I'm coming to the altar and I'm coming to say that this is going to be my, my resource. When it's marriage, it's a resource. When you come to Christ, it's the source, okay? This is where I'm going to get my peace, my love, my joy, my sex. This is where I'm going to get all this in marriage. When I come to Christ, this is where I'm going to get my love, my joy, my peace, my patience. This is where I'm going to get my provision. My God, come on. But when adultery is committed, you came out of covenant and you took the blessing and you put it into another jar. Then let me show you what that looks like in the spirit realm. Peace comes from God. 
He said, I shall give you peace that surpasses all understanding. So when you need peace, if you turn to weed, you've committed adultery. What does that look like in marriage? Come on, God, I love your word on today. When you stand and you say, this is my person that I'm going to be married to, and this is who I believe that the Lord has signed me up to, my God, come on. The job, the covenant is love her like Christ loved the church. So if you love her any other way, Christ never hurt his bride, not mentally, not emotionally, not spiritually, not physically. Come on. He, what he did do is, is turn over tables when she was disrespected. His bride never needed protection from him, but he protected her. When that happens, now adultery in the marriage is committed. And so the Lord said, in the, the people that have taken their God gift and signed a contract with the devil to be in these big places, this is why we're building our own television network, bless God. Because I'm not, I don't want to be on their platforms. I'm not interested. I'm not signing any covenant with the devil to do the work of the Lord. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. The enemy has found a way to capitalize on the God gift. So he will allow, listen to me, Zion. This is how you know. He will allow the presentation of God, but not the power of God. He will allow the production of God, but not the power. So when is the last time you've seen T.D. Jakes cast the devil out? That's the power of God. When is the last time? Come on. See, we have to, we got we to gotta watch. When is the last time you saw, okay, someone get, there's deliverance that happened at an altar when these people are singing songs. It's only a presentation of God. But the word of God is not just presentation, it's power and demonstration. Bless your name, oh God. Hmm. Verse 18, you use the beautifully embroidered clothes to dress your idols. Then you use my special oil, my incense to worship them. God, I bless your name. Ooh, you use the anointing in a kingdom that was not mine. You sung on stages. God, I love your word on today. You presented my glory in a place that was not holy, in front of a people that did not reverence me. My God. This is definitely a warning for Ja'Kalen Carr because God has called her. Yeah. It will be available later on my YouTube channel. God, I bless your name. Also, you'll be able to catch it on my um, website. God has called her to be a sword, not to be a butter knife. God has called her to be a sword, not to be a butter knife. And I believe and I pray. I pray that this word of God reaches some of the people in the industry. And they're worried about the contracts. You ain't got to worry about breaking a contract, baby, because the earth is the Lord's. There is a contract that is greater than any earthly contract, than any demonic contract. Greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in the world. And the word is turn back and live. Turn back and live. Turn back and live. This is a warning. For Ja'Kalen Carr, turn back and live. You do not get to use the anointing, the gift of God. She has ears to hear. I promise God has always shown me this. She has ears to hear. She just don't say everything he says. And what happens is if you continue to not say everything he says, the ear begins to rot. And then you will not even have ears to hear anymore. And then you'll just be operating on what you used to do. And there is no fresh revelation. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Verse 19. Imagine it. You set before them as a sacrifice, the choice flower, olive oil, and honey that I had given you, says the sovereign Lord. 
You don't get to use your gift however you want, whenever you want, wherever you want. You do not get to, when my, I told my daughter, your voice was anointed for the kingdom of God. I told my other daughter, your dance was anointed for the kingdom of God. You do not dance for the devil. You do not sing for the devil. Yeah. God, I bless your name. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Don't you realize your body is a temple, the Holy Spirit? Who lives in you and was given to you by God. You don't belong to yourself. <laughs> you don't belong to yourself or God brought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord. That is the command that is given from heaven. That is the offering. That is when you say, hey, I want to accept Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, that this is what you have to understand. This is what you got to get. Now, once you clearly have understood that, this is your response. Galatians 2. Perfect in all of your ways. You are holy in all of your ways. Bless your name, O oh God. Verse 20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I will live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I will live in this earthly body by trusting God, not trusting a Hollywood contract, not trusting a Hollywood producer, not trusting uh, uh, whatever. I'm not. That's not what God has called us to do. You're perfect in all of your ways. Your gift does not belong to you. You do not get to use it. However, you won't turn back and live. It's the word of the Lord. It's the message of the Lord. Turn back and live. Bless your name, O oh God. Copyright infringements. Y'all think Hollywood's copyright infringements are bad. The Lord said, listen, you think that you get to use your God gift and everything. Let's go back to Ezekiel 16. You don't get to use all of your God gifts in whatever kingdom that you want to use them in. Bless your name, oh God. <laughs> then you took your sons and daughters and children you had born to me and sacrificed them your, to your gods, to your influence. Was your prostitution not enough? Then you taught other people. Then those that have come up under. I was at a service a little while back with one of, one of Juanita Bynum's spiritual sons. And that's what he said. It was his spiritual mother. And now there is a way that is being taught. There is a way that is being taught. Come on. I need us to get this because it's not many have learned. Yes, the word is true. Yes, they're accurate. Yes, they hear God, but they've learned to prostitute the gospel. Yes, I, it's, some of this is just gone too far. God is not saying give a thousand dollar seed every day, y'all. He's not saying that. And so you, it matters who you come up under. Was your prostitution not enough? Must there also be the slaughter of my children by sacrificing them to idols? In all of your years of adultery and detestable sin, you have not once remembered the days long ago when you were naked in the field, kicking about in your own blood. Come on. The Lord said, listen, you're going to have to understand this. You're go I promise you, the devil and the world, they know godly principles more than the people of God. And so it's being used against the people of God. Be 
because we don't like to study to show our self-approved. Yes, there should be a stream of income attached to the people of God from those that benefit from it. The word of God says that those that benefit from the preaching of the gospel, they should absolutely support those who preach the gospel. Yes, that's absolutely true. And that's true. Yes, there should be a stream of income that comes. You should bring your 10% in the house of God. You should sow seeds. Absolutely. That is all true. That's true. That's nothing. That's Bible. But there's come to a place where people are prostituting the gospel. Do the people of God need an airplane? I absolutely think they actually do need an airplane. But I don't think they need the top of the line, most amazing 60, 35,000 passenger airplane with all heated seats and all of these things. Do I think that they need all of that? No. But do I think they should have the most broke down, beat down airplane that ain't even going to get them to nowhere? No, I don't believe that either. Some have gotten fat off of the offering. You don't want to miss the message tomorrow at 12 noon. Yeah. Help us, Holy Ghost. Bless your name. Verse Ezekiel 16 and 23. What sorrow awaits you, says the sovereign Lord. In addition to all your wickedness, you built pagan shrines and put altars to idols in every town square. On every corner, you defiled your beauty, offering your body to every passerby in the endless stream of prostitution then to your then you added lustful egypt to your to your lovers provoking my anger and increasing your promiscuity i promise you see if we understand that adultery and sexual immorality is not always sexual morality is not always sexual it's spiritual before it's sexual the, the, this is talking about yes in the natural this is a thing that people are absolutely doing taking their body taking their beauty taking their looks and they're going out there but in the spirit the people of God are using their God gift and being promiscuous in other kingdoms they're taking anointed anointed Forgive us, but we knew not what we did. Anointed um, minstrels, those who play the gospel, anointed psalmists are singing in other kingdoms. I'm going to tell you one who I know God called and anointed her voice. Uh, I want to say her name is Janae Aoki. I think that's her name. I don't know how you pronounce it. But I know that her her message, her, her gift came from God, but she lended it to another kingdom. It's so much pull on her voice. It's so much drawing on her voice. It draws you right in. It draws you right in. Her voice was anointed. She was anointed to be a psalmstress, but because she's now a psalmstress in the other kingdom, the gift is in with the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So you can still use the gift in another kingdom and the gift is still going to do what the gift does. The gift is still going to work. And so it still draws, but unfortunately, instead of it drawing you out of the world, her gift draws you into the world. The influence that Beyonce has on her life, that was a gift from God. It was never meant to be used in the wrong kingdom. The gift of influence, it comes from God. And it's supposed to be given back to God. But because people have given it to another kingdom... It still works. That's why the following is like it is. She ha Beyonce has an apostolic call on her life. She was called to stand up. She was called to be before people. She was called to draw. She was called to establish kingdoms in the earth for the kingdom of God. But it's been used in another way. And it's been perverted. But the gifts of God are without repentance. So even if they don't repent, the gift is still going to do what the gift does. The people are supposed to have a protective feeling about their leader. So that's why the people, again, you can talk about Beyonce, you talk about these people, they're supposed to. What did Peter do? When they came for his leader, something in my heart was like, you're not about to run up on my leader. So it's natural when I tell you these things. If you have a still in your heart, if there is an alliance, of course there's going to be kickback if you like Geno Jenkins. Of course there's going to be kickback if you love Juanita Bynum. Of course there's going to be kickback. It was kickback in my own heart. 
But the word of God says, let God be true and every man be a liar. Who bless your name, O oh God. Verse 27. That is why I struck you with my fist and reduced your boundaries. I handed you over to your enemies, the Philistine, and even they were shocked by your lewd, uh, your lewd conduct. Conduct. Listen, we have to understand. This is the Lord. Don't worry. You like all oh, these people. Got, no, it's only so far that people are going to be able to go. It is only. I promise you, this word is turn back and live. This is my best advice that I want y'all to do. When we get done with this live, I'm gonna put it on my YouTube. I'm gonna chop it up and put some TikToks. But I want you to share it because prayerfully it gets to the people it needs to get to. Because we, we agree, we can agree on the word of God, my God, but I pray that it gets the people that it needs to get to. That's right, exactly. That's the truth. Come on. The only kickback through, though should be to, through, the, let me read that. The only kickback, <laughs> though, should be to the word of God, not to human. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Come on. Yeah. That's right. So true. And so this is really important that we get this so that we can understand what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Oh, my God. Help us. Yeah. Help us, Holy Ghost. You have verse 28. You have prostituted yourself with Assyrians, too. It seems you can never find enough new lovers. After your prostitution there, you still are not satisfied. You added to your lovers by embracing Babylonia, the land of the merchants, but you still weren't satisfied. What a sick heart you have. When people have prostituted the gift of God on our life and they just use it anywhere with any person, anything, you can use my gift. Okay, well, we just want you to come because of the person that you are. We know that you draw. We want you to come because we know that you draw. You can't, your gift cannot be used everywhere your gift cannot be used just because and, and, I, and a lot of times we can get tricked because we, we we can get deceived because we want to do good things we want to do good things but i promise you i just believe in my heart that there is going to be some the one thing i say is god if it don't right if it ain't right don't let me have peace about it if it ain't right, don't let me have peace about it. Somebody sent me some money last night on Cash App, and I did not. I woke up, and I still didn't have peace. I had to send it back. Come on, because I cannot accept what God does not want me to accept. And you cannot accept what God does not want you to accept. And did I need it? Absolutely, I needed it. But I don't want it if it comes from another kingdom be mindful that you pass the test in this season what a sick heart you have says the sovereign lord to do such things as these acting like a shameless prostitute you build pagan shrines on every street corner your altars to idols in every square. In fact, you have been worse than a prostitute. So eager for seeing that you have not even demanded payment. My God, listen, that scripture right there was like, my Lord. The people, I don't know why people think that God is only sunshine and rainbows. Yes, you are an adulterous wife who takes in strangers instead of her own husband. You won't take the presence of God. Come on. You don't want your husband. God, I bless your name. Who is the father? Who is your husband? No, you don't want that. My God, come on. You want everything else. You don't want the husband who is your provider. You want the world to be your provider. You want Hollywood to be your provider. This And let me break it down on a smaller scale. That is the same thing that the government has done with government assistance. That's the same thing done. That's the same thing that's getting ready to be done with the, the mark of the beast. You don't want the husband to be your provider. You want the mark. You want what the benefits of the mark. Were. I promise I gave a message the Lord gave me called come out of her. It's on my YouTube channel. The Lord was saying, come out of the Babylonian systems. Come out of these worldly ways. My God, come on. Bless your name, oh God. And I promise you, I was going to buy my daughter some tea because her throat was scratchy and I, they didn't have no other tea in the store. They didn't have no other tea. And the only tea they had was one, and I like, I used to buy this brand of tea and now they got some good flavors, but 
It said Yogi or something. And the name on it was like, mm, something in that didn't sit right with my spirit. So I turned the box, the box over and it said something about yoga. It had yoga poses. So it's going to be little decisions at a time. What kingdom you come into agreement with. They ain't have no other tea in my baby's throat. Scratchy, y'all. But I had to put it back on the shelf and say, God, I trust you to provide. And I trust you to listen. If we got to get some hot water, lemon, and honey, and I just ask that you bless it. Come on. I don't say these things. I share my testimonies not to give glory to myself, but just to show you the way of the lifestyle of faith, the things that the Lord teaches me on the daily. Verse 33, prostitutes charge for their services, but not you. You give gifts to your lovers, bribing them to come and have sex with you. So you are the opposite of a prostitute. You pay your lovers instead of them paying you. <sighs> Bless the Lord. Help us, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Copyright infringements. Yep, the same with Starbucks. It was it's a restaurant that I like to eat at here. And the, the food was the first time I ate it, the food was so good. The second time I ate it, the food was okay. And the third time I ate it, I was like, it just really ain't that good. And when I went to go pay my money, uh, it was Buddha dolls and cat little things and all of that. And I was like, Oh, yeah, I ain't gonna be able to come back here no more. Come on, because even your dollar matters what kingdom you put it into, and it's gonna start restricting you. It's going to start restricting you because some things you're going to want to sow into, some things you've been, thing you've been buying all your life, but the Lord is getting ready to show you what kingdom it belongs to. It's up to you. So then people start offering it to you for free. You ain't got bad. This is like when you're trying to stop an addiction or something. Let's say you're trying to stop smoking weed and you ain't called the weed man in a long time. And then he called you. I got something free for you. Be careful. Those things that seem free are not always free. Those things that seem free are not always free. And those things that come with a whole lot of money are not always good. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Lord, we thank you for your word on today. Give us ears to hear. And I ask to see. Give us an understanding in our heart. But no man can understand the word of God unless it is revealed to them. May this word be revealed to us in our heart. May our spirit bear witness. And anything that was said is that is not right, Lord, don't let it be comfortable with my soul. Lord, we love you on today for your holy. Search our hearts. If you find anything that's not like you, let it be revealed so that it can be dealt with on this side of heaven. Bless your name, O oh God. Create in us a clean heart and renew in us a righteous spirit so that we may serve you. So that we may stand on the day of judgment and hear you say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Bless your name. It's the word of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good, y'all. All right, I pray the word blessed you. I pray that it encouraged you. I pray that it strengthened you. I do encourage you to share it when I once I post it up on my YouTube channel. I do encourage you to, to subscribe to our website, which is makeoverministry.com. Um, yeah. Have a great day on purpose. If you would like to sow into the word, our cash app is dollar sign makeover ministry. Blessings and peace. I'm Apostle Julia of the Makeover Ministry. Um, and Makeover Transformation Church. If this is your church home, we'll see you tomorrow at 12 p.m. on TikTok. We'll also be on Instagram. And I believe tomorrow, instead of being on Facebook, we'll be uh, on, well, we may be on Facebook too, at Makeover Transformation Church. And we'll be on um, makeoverministry.com. So have a blessed day on purpose and be encouraged. Hallelujah.
Wow. Wow. That is wow. Let me, I got to read this out loud because I, that's just, thank you for sharing that because it just keeps me knowing that I'm hearing in right timing from God. Someone said, um, I do have PayPal, but wait a minute, let me read this. Someone said, you don't even understand Universal is in my email right now and I haven't dropped an album yet. The Spirit is using you and I thank you for sharing the word. Amen. Amen. Don't sell your gift. It's not for sale. Child. I got it. Actually, there's another message the Lord gave me called, I think it's called Copyright. That's on my YouTube channel also a little while back, um, dealing with the same topic. So have a blessed day on purpose. Be encouraged. Oh, someone said, what is my PayPal? Um, what is my PayPal? Go to my, uh, if you go to my, you're on TikTok, if you go to my page, you can um, hit my link tree that's in my bio, and I believe my PayPal is on there, or you can just message me. Um, amen. Uh, what restaurant did you mention again? Uh, today? I don't think I mentioned a restaurant today. All right, have a blessed one, people of God.